Welcome to IdeaGen TV. Today, I am honored to have with us Bill Novelli, Professor Emeritus and founder, Georgetown Business for Impact Center, and former CEO of AARP, in addition to co-chair for the Coalition of Trust in Health and Science. Bill, a heartfelt welcome. Welcome, my friend. Thank you, George. Thank you for having me. You know, there are so many individuals that claim to be changing the world, uh, you know, across the planet that we come across, Bill, but you, my friend, are changing the world. You're leading the way and you're truly leadership defined. And I would like to, before you tell me that there are others as well, I want to just focus on you today. I want to focus on asking you to kindly describe for us the mission of the Coalition for Trust in Health and Science, why you became involved, and perhaps most importantly, what is it that makes this organization's work so vital? Well, George, first of all, uh, we know that um, without trust, uh, people can't make good decisions about themselves, their families, their communities. And um, we are really, at this point, in a tidal wave of misinformation and disinformation. And the problem's getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, a UNICEF report showed that, um, that there's a declining confidence uh, in childhood vaccines. Uh, there was a Pew study that showed that uh, about 28% of Americans think that um, people should be able to decide not to vaccinate their children. Um, and then in addition to that, climate misinformation and disinformation is growing. Uh, the New York Times reported that uh, Russia and China and various companies and what they called online provocateurs are threatening climate understanding and trust. And then, uh, George, to top it all off, uh, just a few days ago, there was a Davos report, and it said that uh, disinformation is the biggest threat to democracy in the coming years. So that's what we're facing. You know, the provocateurs, that's a, that's a powerful word, and it, it just makes you wonder. It makes you wonder and makes you think about what it is that we're facing. And so how does the Coalition of Trust in Health and Science establish credibility to be able to inform the public on this crucial, absolutely vital health information in an accurate way, Bill. Well, George, you know, you're good at coalition building. And so you know how hard it is to put together an effective coalition. But in the last year, we've, we've done that. We now have 90 members of this big tent coalition. And the way we see it is um, that we've got to communicate to the public through these coalition members. Because if you add them all up, we're talking about millions and millions and millions of people. And what we have to do basically is to uh, help them to utilize science-based information. So what's, what's true? What works? What's accurate? What does science tell us? And then, as you know, George, in addition to that, you've got to really have credible, trusted messengers. Uh, and these messengers may or may not be the Centers for Disease Control. It may be the, the minister down the road. Um, and so that's how we're going to do it. And we're at it right now. Well, Bill, this coalition is obviously vital. And so how does the coalition, it's a coalition, how does it work with a variety of partners from both the public and the private sector, which you and I both know is critical, to form this cohesive response to health-related questions in what you just alluded to, which is the potential for misinformation? Well, the, um, the um, uh, answer is that uh, we work with organizations that do surveillance. So what's out there? What's being broadcast? What's being communicated? And of course, you know the old uh, Mark Twain joke or story. He said that a lie can travel around the world before the truth gets its boots on. And so we've got to be fast. We've got to be quick actors. So what we're doing is uh, surveilling what's out there, taking the information, adding to it how to refute, how to rebut the disinformation, 
and then sending that to our members. And so what do you, Bill, believe is needed to get this information into the hands of every American and ultimately to everyone across the planet? Well, it is a, it's a global problem. We've got countries spreading disinformation. Uh, we've got people trying to influence the coming elections. Uh, I mentioned earlier the, uh, the issue that the, that the disinformation is a threat to democracy, uh, to healthcare, to everything. Uh, the only way to do this is to work together. Um, nobody's gonna be able to do this alone. That's why these 90 members are so important, but we have to build the coalition even more. And I think that the biggest way to build it now, George, is to bring in more industry, more companies, more corporations. Well, Bill, you know that I agree with you. And you recently wrote a Fortune article addressing the effects of caregiving for millennials and Jaxers within the workplace. Bill, can you kindly outline these four takeaways from this incredible article, which I've had the privilege of reading for our global audience? Well, this is a slightly different subject, but it's a very, very important one. So we know that the American population is aging very rapidly. And we have more and more older adults with disabilities and with chronic illness. Um, one in six full-time workers in our country is a caregiver. And this is happening across the world. The whole world is aging except perhaps for Africa. Um, and many of these caregivers are millennials, Gen Xers, you know, our experienced workers. And many of them, the majority of them are women. And these people, these caregivers are more likely to re report being stressed, to have worked while feeling unwell, have financial hardship, and they're really suffering in terms of work-life balance pressures. Uh, they miss work, they reduce their work hours, they refuse promotions, they even quit the workforce in order to be caregivers for their family members. Uh, they don't feel like they're seen by their uh, employers. Uh, one of the caregivers said, I feel like a hidden warrior. And that's really what they are, George. They're hidden warriors. And they often don't even believe that their employers have services to support them. And so um, I'm part of something called the Coalition to Transform Advanced Care, or CTAC. And we and, and the, uh, the Cigna Foundation studied this. And we really found how serious the problem is. Uh, these caregivers, they struggle with a lack of knowledge about diseases. Uh, they really are at sea in terms of how to cope in general with the demands of caregiving. So George, what we have to do is help companies be able to respond positively to this crisis. Uh, companies need to know what services they have available because caregivers often don't know that. They have to offer flexible working arrangements, you know, flex time, alternative shifts, job sharing, that kind of thing. Uh, they need to help with the specifics of retirement, including the likelihood of caregiving expenses. And then here's a big one, George. Um, if caregivers quit the workforce to take care of aging relatives, whenever that is over, when that caregiving is over, the companies ought to consider bringing them back. Uh, and so if we can do these things, if we can get companies to really understand this, I think we can cope with this problem. Bill, you know, this is a, a fundamental issue uh, that I know you're passionate about. I share that passion. And it's so incredible to hear you and your passion and you're talking about it. And I would like to suggest to our global audience, and we'll put a link uh, when this interview is released globally, for content sharing and distribution, a link to your Fortune article, which I think folks will appreciate because I think you went into such great detail uh, in addressing and outlining the issue. Uh, so this caregiving dilemma that we have, um, which has been exacerbated in so many ways over the past years, is something that we all need to look at. And, and you're providing you know, not only the context, but 
the potential solution in terms of trying to galvanize employers to really take this issue and address it. Well, I, Georgia, I, I really appreciate that. You know, if we can keep more women in the workforce, it's going to benefit our economy and it's going to really do a, a lot for family incomes. Well, that's right. It's an economic argument and that's a powerful one for sure, Bill. And so why do you believe that the adequate investment to support caregivers has not been met? Why has it not happened given its clear impact on so many Americans? Well, you know, George, um, we can be very myopic in terms of our policies in this country. So we need to improve support uh, for home care workers, caregiving for older workers, but also caregiving for children. Um, how are we going to keep our workforce strong if we don't do that? Uh, we need policy change at the highest levels. Well, the policy change is critical. And so as the former CEO of ARP, you are obviously well aware of the rise and potential impact increased caregiving can have. But are there economic opportunities or possibilities prioritizing this caregiving and caregivers that can create this solution? What, what do you see on the horizon? Well, I think there are several things, George. Uh, number one, uh, we have to do a better job among employers of keeping their caregiver workers in the workforce. Number two, as I said before, we really do need federal and state policy change so that, you know, there's more and more uh, caregiving moving into the home. Everything from hospice to palliative care to you name it. We have to figure out how to make the home work uh, for these women who are out in the workforce so that they don't have to quit their jobs. Um, and then the third thing, really, I think, is to help families work together. Well, you just outlined it. And I wanted to close this incredible interview, this incredible in interview where you've provided, Bill, so much incredible insight into these critical issues around health, caregiving. I mean, we're at a nexus and we're at a point where we, in our pre-interview, discussed a little bit of, about AI and everything that's happening in AI and the possibilities of AI. And that's just the tip of the iceberg at this moment. We have a lot of promise is what I'm trying to say. And at the same time, trust is a critical component, which you've been a pioneer, you've been a beacon of hope on, and you always talk about that co component and focus on trust. And so Bill Novelli, Professor Emeritus and founder, Georgetown Business for Impact Center, former CEO of AARP and co-chair for the Coalition of Trust in Health and Science. I wanna personally and professionally thank you. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your, all you're doing to change the world. And thank you for your passion to make it all happen, Bill. Well, thank you, George. I wanna congratulate you for being a change maker yourself. Thank you, Bill. It's all of us and uh, we're trying. It's not easy to change the world. If it were, someone would have done it a long time ago. And my friend, you're doing it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.